Hello and welcome to Boxer's Shorts. I'm Adam Boxer and I'm a science teacher trying to help you understand more of GCSE science. In these short videos, I will try and take difficult concepts from GCSE science, break them down, um, help you understand them, and then do some practice questions on those concepts. In terms of some general tips for using these videos, definitely do not have your phone on or anywhere around you. It's a distraction and it means you won't be able to concentrate properly. The same applies for other tabs on your computer. So don't have your social media tabs open on your computer or laptop. It will just distract you. I'm going to ask you to do some questions. If you don't actually do them, you won't actually learn anything. So make sure when I do ask you to do those questions, you do them. And finally, let me know in the comments if there is a topic that you want me to cover. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can subscribe and just let me know if there's something you want me to do for you. All right, we are now going to look at reaction profiles. Uh, in the previous session, we looked at endothermic and exothermic change. Uh, today, what we're going to look at is this thing called a pr reaction profile, which is kind of a way that chemists show what's going on in a reaction. It's a type of graph that allows us to show what's happening in a reaction. So just to recap, let's imagine we've got a reaction over here where I've got A plus B forming C. Now, what we did last time is I showed you that if I imagine these things as like a battery, if A and B are storing loads and loads of energy, and C is storing very little energy, then the reaction has to be exothermic. The reaction has gone somewhere. Now, in a sense, what we do is we're just going to turn these little diagrams into a graph. So let's say I had a graph and my y-axis here was just energy. I'm looking for the amount of energy that something's got. So A and B have an amount of energy up to there. C has an amount of energy just over there. And what I'll do is I'll now rub out the batteries. So I've got these kind of two points where I've got A and B up here and I've got C down here. In fact, this is called a reaction profile. It's just a really simple graph showing the relative difference in energy. So A and B, they've got energy up here. C, it's got energy down there. Now, obviously, what we could do is we could say, right, well, that there is going to be the energy change in the reaction. So the difference in energy between here and here, and you know, this might be a thousand joules, and this might be 800 joules, which means that difference would be 200 joules. It doesn't really matter. The point is, you know, from reaction to reaction, it will change, but the distance between them, that's going to be the size of the change. You'll also often see kind of a line with an arrow sometimes drawn on it. You'll sometimes see the arrow over there drawn on it like that, but sometimes the arrow won't be there. So I'll just take it out just so that you don't think that it has to be there. And there are two things that you need to note here. The first is that energy change. You need to make sure your arrowhead, if you're marking the energy change, goes to this point where that line is. If you have an arrowhead that looks like that and the line is up there, then it's wrong. It's not right. Okay. So the arrow for the energy change needs to be touching that dotted line. This bit here is a bit more complicated and it's a bit frustrating that's in your syllabus here because um, it will make a lot more sense when you study rates of reaction. But this bit here is called the activation energy. And essentially the activation energy is the amount of energy that you need to put in just to get the reaction to work. So if you take, for example, like a match burning, right? So a match um, burning is an exothermic reaction. It's producing or it's releasing heat to its surroundings. But you need to put a bit of energy in in order to get it to work. So you need to strike it on the side of the matchbox. And that's a bit more complicated than that in reality. But in principle, that's what you're doing. You're putting a bit of energy in in order to get it going. That's the activation energy. So that's the amount of energy that I put in to get the reaction 
going. So that there is your reaction profile for an exothermic change. Okay, let's see what that looks like for an endothermic reaction now. And I'm gonna try and draw it quite a bit bigger because I don't think that last one was big enough, which might have made a couple of the points on it a bit unclear. So I've now got X and Y reacting together to make Z. And again, I'm gonna draw out my battery to represent X and Y and my battery to represent Z. Now in this case, Z has loads of energy in it, like that, and X and Y together only have a bit of energy in them like that. Again, I'll mark off the amount of energy in X and Y and the amount of energy relative to that in Z. And up the side here, I have energy and sometimes you'll see along the bottom it will say progress of reaction all that means progress of reaction all that means is that X and Y are turning into Z reactants are turning into products nothing more complicated than that I'm gonna rub out my batteries because remember the batteries is just like it's called a model it's just a way for me to help you understand what's going on here but you don't really need to think of it as anything that's actually true right there aren't little batteries sat in the chemicals and I'll draw my line again and this time it goes all the way up to here and then down this bit here represents the energy change in this case that's taken in so we start off with only a little bit of energy, we end up with a lot, so we have to take that energy in from somewhere. And my, sorry, I should draw that on the other side actually. My activation energy is this. So actually for an endothermic reaction, the activation energy is really, really high. And in order to get the reaction going, I need to put in loads and loads of energy. And there you have it two reaction profiles, one for endothermic and the other for exothermic. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna draw you two reaction profiles and I'd like you to copy these down as A and B and these will form the basis of the question set that's about to come up. So your first reaction profile is this and we'll call it A your second reaction profile is this and we'll call it and we will call it B so copy those down and then um, shortly you'll see some questions based on these two all right so here are your questions uh, on those two diagrams those reaction profiles that you just drew as ever um, pause the video do the questions and then when you're ready um, I'll flip over back to the whiteboard and show you how to get the answers to these questions all right so you did these uh, the questions that were based on these two reaction profiles the first question was to draw an arrow to show the overall energy change on each profile so in this case for this one that arrow is going to be this distance between and again like I said before it's important that the tip of that arrow goes all the way don't be lazy and just go it's that because then you end up dropping a mark in the exam make sure it goes all the way so that's the energy change for that one and that's the energy change for that one number two is an arrow to show the activation energy on each profile so for that we'll draw a line like this In this one, our activation energy goes all the way up to the top of that point. And in this one, it goes to the top of that point. Which profile is endothermic and which is exothermic? How does the profile show this? This one is endothermic because, and you need to say phrases like, the products... have more energy than the reactants 
And again, it's very simple. Sorry, not react, reactants. It's a very simple model, um, and it is a bit more complicated in reality than that. But for us, that's enough. And then in this one, you're saying the products have less energy than the reactants, which is why it's exothermic. The energy has got to have gone somewhere. Which profile has a greater overall energy change? A, because the, the difference between those two lines is larger. So the difference between those two lines is only that here, but it's much bigger on this side. In which profile will the temperature of the surroundings increase? That's B, because it's exothermic. In which profile will the temperature of the surroundings decrease? That's A, because again, A is pulling in energy from the surroundings. This energy, this extra energy has got to come from somewhere. It comes from the energy. Um, so, sorry, it comes from the surroundings. So if the surroundings are losing energy, their temperature is going down. And then finally, which profile could represent the reaction in a sports injury cold pack? Uh, as we spoke about in the last video, that's got to be this one because that's an endothermic change. All right, you can now do reaction profiles, and that's all we're going to do um, in that section. A reminder that you can subscribe if you want more videos, and if there's anything that you want to um, you, that you want me to cover, please do just let me know. Um, and our next video will be about bond energies.